Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders. We're continuing our intermediate series by today discussing these guys. An absolutely awesome species from Madagascar called the Dumarils boa. These and their cousin, the Malagasy ground boa, uh, belong to the genus Acrantophis. This animal is Acrantophis dumarilli. Its cousin is Acrantophis madagascarensis. Once upon a time, 10, 15 years ago, actually, these were everywhere, even though these are protected species and you have to have CITES paperwork and the animals have got to be microchipped, they were actually a pretty common species. They weren't particularly high value. They were awesome. And then, as with all things seemingly over the last 10 years, their popularity has waned and the availability has gone, which is a real shame because this is a stunning boa um, and heavy set, lovely and chunky build absolutely awesome cryptic patination really helps it camouflage itself which we'll get to in a little while They're absolutely awesome so these two species are endemic to the island of madagascar off the coast of africa the dumarils boa its strongholds are in southwestern deciduous forests and the malagasy ground boa is north and northeastern of uh, the malagasy island so the Dumarils boa is the smaller of the two species with females generally in captivity maxing out at around seven feet. Uh, the males are usually between five and five and a half feet. The maximum quoted size for a Dumarils is a little over eight feet long, but seeing that in captivity is almost unheard of. And we'll probably get to why that is a bit later on as well. Malagasy ground boa is quoted as being the largest species, but in actual fact in captivity they're pretty much the same. Um, although the maximum quoted size for the Malagasy ground boa is upwards of three meters long for females, so 10 feet in length. Uh, again, you're, just, you're never going to see that at all. Uh, expect them to be considerably shorter than this. They are chunkily built uh, and heavy set snakes, very powerful, good size heads, good muscle structures behind the eyes, uh, and they do have a powerful bite if they decide to have you. Uh, you're keeping an intermediate snake now. So deal with it, it just is what it is. Um, the reason for the cryptic patination is, particularly with the Dumarils, is they are um, specialists in the dry deciduous forests of southwestern Madagascar. Uh, the trees drop their leaves in winter to avoid excessive evaporation, and this leaves a massive leaf litter on the floor. So through the dappled light of the branches of limbs of the tree and the fallen leaf litter, that cryptic patination makes the snake almost invisible. They spend an ordinate amount of time underneath the leaf litter and they wait in ambush for their prey, which is generally mammals. Um, they, they, there is a pronounced winter in, Mal in Madagascar, particularly in the southwestern part. We are in the southern hemisphere. There is a winter. Um, I spoke to a guy called Chris Matteson, who is a respected uh, writer of on herpetology and herpeticulture. Uh, wrote the Encyclopedia of Snakes, Keeping and Breeding Snakes, all this sort of stuff. And he does photographic tours for um, people that, are, that want to go and photograph them in the wild. And he's been to Madagascar a few times and he says people don't quite grasp just how cold it gets in that southwestern region. Uh, and he says it's not uncommon when we've been out there in the winter time for there to even be a ground frost just beginning to form on the tops of leaves. And he says these boas are 6, 12 inches underneath. So he says it really is colder than people think. Um, so that's worth, worthy of bearing in mind. I don't think we need to go that extreme in captivity, but this animal in the wild would have a pronounced brumation. It would probably last a good few months. It's imperative the females have gained enough weight to make it through that time and then to be able to breed. Um, with regards to temperature, you don't need to go mad. 28 to 30 degrees at the warm end. They'd cool down to about 26 degrees at the cool end. They are from the dry forests, but they may require slight spraying to be able to get them to shed their skin. Uh, the reliance on humidity may be higher uh, as babies than it is as adults, but that's the same with many bowed snakes where this, the babies might just need a little bit in the way of help of relieving them of their skin. Um, they would breed at different times in the wild, but in, in captivity, us being Northern Hemisphere, the US, which I know a lot of you watch the videos as well, um, they're going to breed December, January is, is pretty much the peak of breeding, although it does uh, occur outside these areas as well. Um, and then the partuition or birth of the babies 
would occur July to August. So that is quite a long gestation. Um, at least probably another six weeks on top of a common boa. So it does take some time for them to cook their babies. The babies are born large and robust with huge yolk reserves. So what I would say is that it would be absolutely normal for you to go three or four months with your baby and it not feed. And that is not particularly anything to worry about. Because of brumation, the region of, of, of time throughout the year when they're born, there is talk sometimes of maybe brumating them, having never fed, uh, just a cool down, and this can act as a trigger uh, to try and get them food in. Uh, what this has led to is because they can be unreliable sometimes with their food intake uh, and growth rate, is that I remember in like the early 2000s, people like dwarf dumbrils, and it's like there's not dwarf dumbrils, it's just been a crappy feeder, didn't want to grow, uh, there is no dwarf locality. Um, you know, it's just taken a long time for them to get there. Uh, the time to reach maturity is far longer than in uh, other species of boa, uh, with probably five to eight years for a female to be mature, and of a size where it's, you know, uh, worthwhile breeding. So, such as this female, she is six. She's still a good way off being breeding size. And it would be a mistake to breed a snake of this size because then you're producing small babies, which then may grow into small adults. And then we've got issues there, you know. We'd probably be better waiting for this animal to uh, be fed up some more. What's the rush? What's the panic? There's records of 20-year-old females successfully breeding. Part of the reason why I think a lot of people got out of these was they weren't quick enough to breed. They weren't quick enough to rear. And impatience is a huge problem in this hobby. And they just aren't willing to wait and take the time which is a, a, a major problem um, the yolk stores are going to be there for a while you are going to be waiting for your baby to kick in once it is feeding make sure you feed it well we'll try and keep it going it may well be worth roommating them each season although we're giving them a pronounced period of not feeding what this might actually do is act as that trigger to kick them back in the next spring rather than letting them sort of just fizzle out with their food or have protracted periods where they don't want to feed so you know that that's worth bearing in mind uh, the dumber eels has the larger litters of babies so i've personally seen a female where this is one of my stories with paul who, who is here at snakes and adders and one of my most important mentors took me up to his and i watched a female dumber eels give birth to 20 live young i was impressed by the size of the babies they were they were very big but the Malagasy ground boa has even bigger babies, sometimes even pushing two feet in length. And they're capable of taking medium to large mice straight off the bat. But the trade-off is the female can't store as many young, so she may only have sort of eight to 10 young, and that would be about it. Um, absolutely awesome species. Generally, they are relatively docile in nature. The babies can be a little bit stroppy. Um, you may get the odd lazy strike. A bite is painful. They have got powerful heads. They will bite down hard. Um, but if raised and handled with reasonable regularity, they'll stay nice and calm. Another point would be is this animal is noted to maybe just be slightly prone to stress. So this isn't probably a playtime snake where it's going to be out all the time. Your snake won't benefit from that and will probably thank you by going into a fasting period. So in that regard, they're probably along similar lines to royals where we have to strike a balance between you wanting it to be a pet and it being a healthy animal. So we'll just try and keep that balance intact. I hope you're enjoying the videos. We'll keep them coming. If you get the opportunity for a Dummerills or definitely a Madagascan ground boa, don't pass it up. It's a shame there aren't as many of them around anymore. Like I say, they are protected. You need an Article 10 certificate from CITES. They are Appendix 1 animals. And you've got to have a microchip in with them as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at it. It's awesome. We'll keep the videos coming. We hope you're still enjoying them. Visit the website, which is www.snakesandadders.co.uk for more details. Cheers.